Hello and welcome to our supportive information session. Today's topic being understanding depression. Um, for those who may not know me, my name is Krista Vaughn. I'm one of the addiction mental health counselors with the substance use program here at ADS TV. So thank you for tuning in today. Um, so we will start with um, for individuals who may not be connected with our services, um, how to get in touch with us. So we are still offering phone sessions, um, virtual sessions um, and still being able to provide support to the community. So a few different ways um, in getting um, connected. Um, so calling our main line, um, different extensions to connect with depending on certain needs. So if looking for information, um, extension 222, uh, for current clients who may be looking to get uh, in touch with their counselor and haven't been able to, um, that extension being 284. Um, for family members who might have concerns um, with a loved one um, in terms of addiction related concerns um, or looking for some support, um, extension 221. And then we have our withdrawal support at extension 248 and then our RAM clinic at 281. So just some additional supports as well available in the community. Um, so of course there's Reach Out, um, which offers 24-7 uh, support um, through phone um, or through web chat. Um, so their phone number 1-866-933-2023 um, or their web chat uh, website at reachout247.ca. Um, and as mentioned, um, they are available 24-7 um, for those who are in need of some uh, supports. And just some COVID-19 tips to protect your health. Um, so of course we do recognize that COVID-19 is a new illness um, that can affect your lungs and airways um, caused by the coronavirus. Um, so of course practicing good hygiene is the best way to protect against the uh, virus and other illnesses um, in this cold and flu season. Um, so just some tips in terms of washing your hands, making sure you're using soap, um, if possible, warm water for 20 seconds, um, or if no water or soap are available, uh, using hand sanitizer. Um, Minimizing close contact with other people. So of course, maintaining physical or social distancing, um, staying away at least two meters or six feet. Um, and that includes, you know, if you're at the grocery store or out in public, just making sure that we're giving each other space. Um, staying home if you are sick. So if you're experiencing any type of symptoms such as fever, cough, uh, difficulty breathing, um, of course, seeking medical uh, supports and services uh, if and when needed. Um, helpful little tool, uh, self-assessments. So if you think you might be having some symptoms, um, doing the free self-assessment um, and then reaching out for medical supports again if needed. So for today, um, we will get started um, with our grounding exercise. So anyone who is familiar with our supportive information sessions or has attended any of our groups at ADS TV uh, will know that we always start with a grounding exercise. Um, so of course the purpose to help calm the mind, relax the body, um, to be able to improve inner awareness um, and help to support making positive mental or physical changes. Um, so while I am doing the grounding activity, I will cover um, the camera um, just so that you're um, only able to hear my voice. Um, so if you are able to get into a comfortable position, um, whether that be on a chair or a couch, um, you know, wherever feels comfortable for you, um, if able to put feet flat on the floor um, and closing your eyes if, if feeling comfortable to do so. Okay. Look to yourself a majestic mountain. Any mountain that you can clearly visualize, the more detailed the visualization, the better. The mountain is standing tall and strong. It has been there for thousands of years. All around the mountain, the weather changes. From beautiful sunny skies, to hurricane force winds, to snow and ice. But the mountain always stands firm. The activity just whirls around the mountain, but does not affect it day to day. Now sit quietly and focus on your breath, 
going in and out. Going in and out. As the thoughts come in and out of your mind, picture yourself as the mountain. Sit up tall and strong like a mountain, firmly grounded on the earth. Let the thoughts and the stress and the anxiety whirl around you without affecting you. The thoughts of people and situations that are pressuring you are just thoughts, and you are a mountain sitting strong. You are who you are, who you have always been, regardless of the weather happening around you. Sit with that feeling of power and majesty, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. And when you're feeling ready, open your eyes. Hey, welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for doing that grounding exercise with me. Um, so as mentioned before, today's topic is understanding depression. Um, and I will let you know um, in advance um, that I have um, two screens open right now. So I have um, our topic uh, today, but then behind me, I actually have uh, the notes for the presentation. Um, so if you see my eyes sort of wandering, that's the reason why. Um, so understanding depression. So everyone experiences unhappiness at some point in their lives. Um, depression is much more than simple unhappiness. So things like a general lack of emotion, uh, numbness or feeling flat, lack of pleasure or disinterest from things that you used to enjoy, loss of motivation, decreased sense of self-worth, feeling like a burden to others. So just a stat there in terms of one in 10 Canadians experience depression. Um, and depression is often um, thought as a feeling of deep, consistent sadness. While this may be true for many who struggle with it, the other common feelings associated with depression can um, of course be the, the pieces that were just listed there. Um, and so recognizing it, it is important um, to note that though not everyone who experiences these feelings may receive a formal diagnosis of depression. So there are some gender differences um, when it comes with depression. Um, so depression is more common in women, though the gender differences diminishes uh, with age in Canada. Many hormonal factors uh, may contribute to the increased rate of depression in women, particularly during times um, such as mental cycle changes, pregnancy, postpartum, miscarriage, pre-menopause, and menopause. Men with depression typically have higher rates of feeling irritable, angry, and discouraged. This can make it harder to recognize depression in men. The rate of completed suicide in men is four times that of women, although more women attempt suicide. Um, some factors around age. So some people have mistaken the idea that it is normal for older adults to feel depressed. Older adults often don't want to talk about their feelings um, revolving around hopelessness, sadness, loss of interest in normal, um, normally pleasurable activities, um, or experiencing prolonged grief after a loss. A child who is depressed may pretend to be sick, refuse to go to school, cling to a parent, or worry that a parent may die. Older children may sulk, get into trouble at school, be negative or grouchy, and feel misunderstood. Because normal behaviors vary from one childhood stage to another, it can be difficult to tell whether a child has depression. So understanding depression, so that the main system, sorry, symptom of depression is a sad, despairing mood that is present most days and lasts most of the day lasts for more than two weeks, impairs the person's performance at work, school, or in social relationships. So each individual affected by depression has varying factors that cause these feelings. 
It is also important to note that just because we may have experienced some of these or fit some criteria might not necessarily mean we will develop depression. So causes and risk factors, there is no single cause of depression. Potential triggers though, could be genetic and family history of depression, life events or stresses, hormonal imbalance, unhealed grief or losses, lack of physical activity, lack of social contact, being a perfectionist, being self, or sorry, poor self-esteem, financial difficulties, marginalization or stigma, and addiction. This list of course is not exhaustive and some individuals may um, have additional factors that contribute to the development of their depression. So depression and physical illness, depressive symptoms may be the result of another illness that shares the same symptoms. Um, so something like lupus or uh, hypo, hypothyroidism, um, a reaction to another illness. So, you know, as an example, cancer or heart attack um, caused by neurological changes resulting from a physical illness, such as a stroke. So here you'll see an overall list of symptoms. Um, so some symptoms of depression can include changes in weight or appetite, sleep problems, so lack of sleep or sleeping too much, loss of interest in usual activities, feeling uh, useless, hopelessness, um, and excessive guilt, fatigue or loss of energy, difficulty concentrating and making decisions. So this continues on the, the next slide here, um, including suicidal thoughts, feeling detached or isolated from others. Physical symptoms can include headaches, stomach aches, chest pains, or sore throats, um, sorry, sore joints, <laughs> um, a tendency to cry easily, and a decreased sexual drive. Okay. So some signs for family and friends. So common behavior that family and friends will often notice in people with depression may include things like talking very negatively, abusing drugs or alcohol or gambling problematically, withdrawing from family and friends, complaining of aches and pains, not attending to their personal needs and hygiene, seeming down or crying often, talking about death or suicide, having trouble at school or work, and changes in eating or sleeping patterns. So there are um, some varying diagnosis that people experience um, from feelings of depression. Um, so some different types of depression to go over. So minor depression. Um, so experiencing less than five symptoms for more than two weeks and then major depression. So experiencing five or more symptoms for at least two weeks and a complex mood disorder. Postpartum depression. So postpartum depression is a non-psychotic depression that women may experience shortly after childbirth. Postpartum depression is different from baby blues. Um, which begin within the first three or four days of giving birth, require no treatment and lift within a few hours or days. However, postpartum depression is a deeper depression that lasts much longer. It usually starts within the first month after childbirth, although it can occur any time within the first year and can last weeks to months. In more serious cases, it can develop into chronic episodes of depression. Apart from the fact that it happens soon after childbirth, postpartum depression is clinically no different from a depressive episode that occurs at any other time in a woman's life. Postpartum depression symptoms are the same as in general depression and must meet the cri same criteria for a diagnosis. However, not surprisingly, the symptoms of postpartum depression often focus on motherhood or infant care. Um, seasonal affect disorder is a type of depression that occurs um, during the same season each year. 
Researchers think that SAD is caused by changes in the level of exposure to sunlight. Light therapy is the main treatment for SAD. Medications and psychotherapy, so talk therapy, um, may help to reduce the symptoms. Seasonal affective disorder is a type of depression that occurs during the same season each year. It usually falls in, um, in autumn or winter, but some people may experience season-linked symptoms in the summer. And bipolar disorder or manic depression. So people with bipolar disorder experience episodes of depression and mania. Um, mania, extremely high moods, grandiose, feeling of power, superiority, um, often risk-taking, no need for, for sleep. Depression with psychosis. Um, so this would be um, a person loses touch with reality, hallucinations, um, so hearing voices or seeing people or objects that aren't really there, uh, delusions, so beliefs that have no basis in reality. And dysthenia, so persistent depressive disorder, chronically low mood with moderate symptoms of depression. So addiction and depression. So how do alcohol and other um, drugs affect depression? Alcohol, street drugs, and some prescription medications can provide a temporary break from some symptoms of depression. However, this self-medication simply masks and sometimes worsens the symptoms. <clears throat> In some people, depression can be triggered by abuse of alcohol or other drugs. So depression and anxieties. Um, everyone experiences symptoms of anxiety, but they are generally occasional and short-lived and do not cause problems. But when the cognitive, physical, and behavioral symptoms of anxiety are persistent and severe, um, and anxiety causes distress in a person's life to the point that it negatively affects their ability to work, study, socialize, and manage daily tasks, it may be beyond the normal range. People with anxiety disorders may feel anxious most of the time or for a brief intense episodes, which may occur for no uh, apparent reason. They may have anxious feelings that are so uncomfortable that they avoid daily routines and activities that might cause these feelings. Some people have occasional anxiety attacks so intense that they are terrified or immobilized. People with anxiety disorders are usually aware of the irrational and excessive nature of their fears. When they come for treatment, many say, I know my fears are unreasonable, but I just can't seem to stop them. As a little fact at the, the bottom there, one in six Canadians have an anxiety disorder. So coping skills and treatment options. So thinking about what are some ways um, to help yourself through depression. So counting the small victories. Practice a self-care routine. So things like hygiene, food, sleep, activity. Talk back to yourself. Is what you're telling yourself true? Engage in self-talk. Would you say that to a friend? So practicing self-compassion. It is, if it's something that you're not going to say to another person or another friend, um, you know, making sure that you're, you're not telling yourself that. And setting healthy boundaries and keeping a healthy network. Um, so ensuring that the people that you're surrounding yourself with um, are healthy for, for you and um, especially in your recovery. So coping with symptoms of depression. So reaching out and staying connected, um, whether that's with friends, family, um, counselors, um, support lines like Reach Out, um, attending crisis center if needed, um, lots of different ways to stay connected. Do things that make you feel good. 
um, get moving. So making sure that you're getting um, some form of exercise, um, you know, even if it's a walk around the block uh, for 10 or 15 minutes, of course, we're practicing social distancing during this time um, can really help to um, cope with some of those symptoms of depression. Um, eat a healthy um, depression fighting diet. Get a daily dose of sunlight. So again, that goes back to, you know, able to, if you're able to get out even just for a quick walk. Um, and challenge negative thinking. So uh, again, this goes back to if it's something that you wouldn't say to a friend or family member, um, then don't say it to yourself. Um, so some treatments for depression, um, so counseling, um, so assistance and guidance in resolving personal, social, or psychological, psychological problems and difficulties, working through grief and losses, learning positive self-talk, and addressing cognitive distortions. Psychotherapy, so this is a general term used to describe a form of treatment that is based on talking work done with a therapist. The aim or the goal is to relieve distress by discussing and expressing feelings to help change attitudes, behaviors, and habits that may be unhealthy or unhelpful, uh, to promote more constructive and adaptive ways of uh, coping. So some examples of uh, different psychotherapy treatments would be cognitive uh, behavioral therapy, so CBT, or dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, DBT. Um, so some more, uh, sorry, treatments for depression. So medication. So people who are depressed generally do not have enough of a neurotransmitter serotonin. Antidepressants aid the brain in producing more serotonin. So SSRIs are non-addictive and are important in treatment. It takes about uh, four to six weeks to feel the full effects of the medications. Um, so speaking to your doctor, uh, nurse practitioner, or psychiatrist before starting or stopping medications. So physical activity and exercise. Um, so again, research on depression, anxiety, and exercise shows that the psychological and physical benefits of exercise can also help to improve mood and reduce anxiety. Regular exercise may help ease depression and anxiety by releasing feel-good endorphins that can enhance your sense of well-being. Taking your mind off worries so you can get away from the cycle of negative thoughts that feed depression and anxiety. So what prevents people from getting help? Not realizing they are depressed. Uh, not having the energy to get the help, not having a doctor or a support, a support person to turn to for help, masking the problem or self-medicating with alcohol, drugs, or gambling, feeling anxious about being judged by themselves or others because of the stigma associated with mental health. having one depressive episode increase the risk of future episodes. So research suggests that people who have had one episode of depression have a 50% chance of experiencing another episode at some point in their lives. After two depressive episodes, there is an 80% chance of relapse. So the best protection against relapse with uh, depression is the understanding that depression is an illness that must be managed over your lifetime, even during periods of health. So effective relapse prevention. Become knowledgeable about the signs and symptoms of depression and treatment options, particular your signs and symptoms of depression. Deal with your emotions. Build healthy self-esteem. And if medication has been pre prescribed, continue to take it as prescribed. Again, that goes back to speaking with your um, medical support team if you are planning on stopping your medication um, to ensure that you're doing safely and get the medical go-ahead to do that. Meaningful relation, sorry, meaningful relationships and social support are important for your sense of self-worth and happiness. Make friends who count. Develop a well-balanced life 
So eating, sleeping, exercising. Have a spirituality to call your own, whatever that looks like for you. Include laughter, music, gratitude, positive self-talk, and relaxation techniques in your life. So thank you so much for joining us today with our um, supportive information session. And I hope that you're able to join us um, for additional SISs that will be uploaded onto our website. Um, so please take care and stay safe.